very good morning to you and many thanks for keeping it right 254 my name is Karanja Alex and it's always a pleasure to have you join us for youth and politics every Monday it's usually that time that we get to look at youth and politics some of the things that have been relating so much and happening that relates to us as young people today we have quite a topic that we'd like to look at and probably just be give us a brief understanding since the birthing of Jubilee party in September 8, 2016, after several parties merged, among them, of course, URP and TNA. The question of who will succeed President Uhuru Kenyatta has been running through the minds of many politicians from all the sides of the coin. Now, 2022 politics are seemingly taking preeminence almost in each and every meeting where politicians primarily from Kieleweke and Tanga Tanga are present. Well, this has been in the recent days, considering even yesterday. We have had heated debates with politicians throwing words at each other of a 2022 presidential bid. The president has, however, been calling upon politicians to work for Kenyans rather than playing dirty politics, that's in quote, dirty politics, as he says, focusing on 2022. Well, the big question is for the day, is it time for 2022 politics? To help us answer this and much more, I'm joined by two guests. Of course, among them is Muthiora Karyara. Thank you very much, Alex, for having me today. Karibu sana. Asante. And of course, I'm having right next to him Daniel Orogo, who is a political analyst. So there's a pleasure to be here. Yes. Um, looking forward to wonderful discussion today. All right. Yeah. Amazing. You began somewhere and then you chipped <laughs> in right now. <laughs> Karibu sana. Asante. But before we look even at the 2022 presidential succession politics, I want us to look at uh, the CBC. That is the grade three assessment test that's supposed to be commencing this morning. The rehearsals are supposed to be beginning right now. In the recent days, there have been allegations that uh, there have been not inclusivity of some stakeholders in the sector. What do you think about it? Well, I, I, I think uh, this is a very interesting uh, story that we've been uh, observing for some time. And I think the introduction of CBC um, as a curriculum, vis-a-vis -vis the 844, mm -hmm. it, it, it is important that we understand that is as opposed to uh, trying to be, you know, uh, looking at uh, what really do you know, but then it's really what do you have as, as an individual mm -hmm. basing on your skills, basing on your you know, career development. So for me, I think the assessment of grade three, I would, I would, I would really measure it into a number of things. First right. is the age of, of these uh, pupils by mm -hmm. right now. And if uh, they would be subjected to call it assessment or call it exams or anything mm -hmm. that uh, Net, the Net ministry has been so clear yeah, saying that it's an assessment, not uh, an the examination. The ministry would want to. W either way, in yes. whatever you are subjecting these small mm -hmm. children to, and all this hellabaloo that comes with the exam. So one of the things that I would try to uh, add is the fact that uh, while you, we are really trying to bring up and socialize our, yes. our, our peoples to, to focus on the skills as opposed to paperwork, it is also quite important to safeguard them from the fear of you know, the processes uh, right. that are coming with what we are subjecting them to. The C I saw the press by the CEO and uh, she was saying that, you know, we, this is a very critical age uh, where we are only asking three questions. If are they are below the expectation, above, mm -hmm. or they have exceeded. So I think it's important that even as we subject them towards um, a formative, or I don't know whether it's summative process, would we have put them through a system where they, they come appreciative as opposed to, you know, trying to make them. Mm -hmm. I, I, within us, if mm -hmm. anybody would have mentioned the word exam here, mm -hmm. you could actually see people's faces changing or even <laughs> assessment in any, naturally. What about these uh, small children? Mm -hmm. But then the way you've said that our um, education has been littered with a number of conflicts, All right. which really needs to be harmonized as we speak. Mm -hmm. As we speak, you, you know what the, the troubles that, uh, you know, the, na the, the Secretary General of NAT is in, yes. and, and all other stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the more the inclusion, yes. the more the consultation, mm -hmm. and the more the engagement, because mm -hmm. these are stakeholders that are quite important mm -hmm. in trying to build up the education system. Right, Mudira, there has been uh, several mentions by the teachers, and of course even some of them head teachers, claiming that they really don't understand what exactly is expected of them. Some of them have been so clear about these issues. Do you think this will be successful? This exercise will be successful, just like KCP and KCP have been before. You remember Professor Magoha, before he became the cabinet secretary, mm -hmm. he was in charge of NEC, and he carried out with great success this national exercise. All right. So I expect that this 
grade three assessment mm -hmm. will be very successful. Now, the question should be, mm -hmm. is the feedback they're going to receive from this exercise going to count in the way that they conduct the rollout of the CBC going forward? Right. And I'll tell you, mm -hmm. it's true that from the beginning, the stakeholder engagement was mm -hmm. not as it should have been. When our constitution says we need to engage stakeholders to have public participation, yes. it should be carried out <coughs> to the latter. All right, uh, we are right now we are looking at a clip where kids, uh, that's the Krasli peoples, all alone they were collecting garbage from all over the markets and cleaning the markets. Uh, I don't know what you think. Are we justified to give these kids these kind of tasks? Well, well, that's what I said. It depends on uh, where the question is coming from. For, for me, I think uh, if this is basically meant for the, uh, you know, um, intellectual or I mean what um, their psychological development learning, I mm -hmm. think it meets what Mugdari is just saying here that would we have a system where it is much appreciative, mm -hmm. more of learning? You know, right. uh, you know, um, either conscious or unconscious, other than you know, telling them that you have to do this because you'll earn grades out of it. Right. For me, um, this is purely for the purposes of trying to understand, for example, the importance of keeping your environment clean. Mm -hmm. You understand, mm -hmm. and the personal responsibility yes. that you, as a young person, have mm -hmm. that you do not need to be wasted by the teachers. I'm putting it so simply just to make me yes. probably understand what what they're being taken through. Mm -hmm. As opposed to being told that, you know, you have to do this each and every time. It, it comes out of their own responsibility as, uh, you know, young leaders and young and pupils who are learning. But now the other thing is here, what we are talking about. The, as, as opposed to what my friend is talking about, mm -hmm. that you see, we have all ideas yes. or all reservations about mm -hmm. Professor Magoha and how he's handling all right. the education system. Others think he's bullying and dozing way through. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to reform education system. Others, Mudhira is, is think is in his mind, is thinking mm -hmm. that uh, Professor Magoha is rolled out the neck, uh, he, when he was in the neck, he's rolled out this CBC system, and he's gonna be successful. All these things, people are subjective to opinion. But mine is, the moment you begin to exclude important stakeholders mm -hmm. in a curriculum development, right. the moment you think that their value do not add up, that is the process of which you begin to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I think this is one of the curriculum, like you said, that would help in, in, in terms of restoring our, you know, trying to uh, bridge the gap that we were seeing within the mismatch of talent and skills and attachment in jobs. Yes. But then it would be very important that we reconsider our own engagement with stakeholders as we speak. Ha, ha, has yeah. the government failed in terms of uh, inclusivity? Well. I mentioned that the kind of participation that was conducted by the Ministry of Education was more of just cosmetics. Let it appear right. as if we consulted the stakeholders, mm -hmm. but then it was not as inclusive so as to it should be. So to it, some sort of a PR? Yes, and to date, mm -hmm. I, I would say they're still making efforts to reach out, but this should have begun before the bus left the station. All right. Now, before, I mentioned that Professor Magoha ran out, carried out successful examinations before. Mm -hmm. So I was referring to mm -hmm. the CBC assessment that's happening. That's oh going right. to be successful. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you that. All right. Just like KCSE has been mm -hmm. and KCPE. All the I question is uh -huh. the feedback they are going to get, what are they going to do with it? And mm -hmm. is that going to be useful? Now, with, with the teachers and preparedness and the, the ones that have said that they don't even know what they are expected to be doing, you still think we are ready for this? Well, I'll give you my own story. Mm -hmm. I moved away from a school that was a bit advanced right. High school? in 1993, right, primary, primary school right. in the Rift Valley mm -hmm. and went to Migori County where there is a subject that I was used to doing then, art and craft and music. But for you, you did eight for system? Yes, yes. Now, when I went to this school, mm -hmm. apparently they did not have art and craft and music. Instead, what they had was handiwork. Right. So to begin with, when I went back home and told my father mm -hmm. that I have been asked to get the following materials, he did not understand. 
because it was as if we were running on different systems. Where I was, mm -hmm. this was not a requirement, but mm -hmm. now I'm in this other school, mm -hmm. and this is the case. So that stakeholder mm -hmm. engagement is very important. First, the people who interact with the children yes. on a daily basis, mm -hmm. that's the teacher. They need to be on board. Mm. That's currently ongoing. Now, besides that, like you've seen in the clip, mm -hmm. the what the children have been taken through also involves the community. Yes. That's the parents as well. Mm -hmm. You see, they say that it takes a whole village to educate a child. So I'm um, pro CBC because this is the new era where you need to develop a child, yes. not just intellectually, uh -huh. but then throughout. Dan, you seem to be having a contrary opinion. Uh, no, uh, not really contrary opinion, but uh -huh. my point of departure has been very clear uh -huh. in the CBC. And uh, you see, um, in the admission that there was a failure of stakeholder engagement yes. uh, to when we were trying to roll out this system, mm -hmm. it, it actually uh, portrays the fact mm -hmm. that we might have begin from, uh, you know, from some, some point you know, that is not all right. right. But then CBC to itself, I think it's one of the curriculum uh, that you know, re will really try to bridge a lot of gap that was created by 844. Right. Everybody agrees on that. My only point of that, th th that I keep on saying is, you know, uh, the fact that uh, as a curriculum, the infrastructure that is already laid, mm -hmm. You, you just intimated yourself there that, you know, some of the teachers, as we speak, yes. have not even understand. What about the equipment? What about laying down? Uh, mm. We are having schools who've not even been connected to the grid, you know, in different parts of the country. This is a system that sometimes requires that you connect it to the grid. You, are, you have full power electricity and infrastructure with it. Mm -hmm. So I am not saying that, you know, this is, this is something that is, is doing its section this detriment, but what I am saying is that even as we enroll it, can we make sure that there's proper infrastructure, the skills and the equipment with the teachers, the well-trained teachers that are able to carry through this curriculum with it? So I, 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 am, I am not opposed to it, but I'm saying that it is requires some, you know, to onboard right. certain things that are hands, until we speak, mm -hmm. there is aversions about those things, whether they are there or not. All right. Yeah. And of course, you can keep on interacting with us on our social media platforms. That is on Twitter, we are at Y254 channel, of course, and on my Twitter handle is at K underscore Alex. And of course, on our Facebook page, it's Y254. Let's go straight to of and, uh, our assessment line, of course, before even tip it to anything. It's 20154, starting with the word Y254. Now, gentlemen, I want us to dive in into the topic of the day. Do you think it's time for 22 politics, Muthiora? Well, 2022 politics mm -hmm. has its season. What we should be focusing on right now is running the nation and helping the government that is in office today to get the manifesto actualized as had been envisioned before. Yes. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Now, that should mostly be the work of parliament because they're the ones who oversight the executive. But then look at the scenario in yes. our leadership today. We have the ruling party that in itself is divided. We have one arm that is Kieleweke, Kieleweke right. and we have Tanga Tanga on mm -hmm. the other side. Now, the party or coalition that came second mm -hmm. in the previous election has crossed over from the opposition into the government. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me, those people who are in government right now should be focusing on delivering to the people. Don't the people who should be focusing on yes. 2022 should be the citizens, mm -hmm. asking themselves if they are getting value from their leaders. And if not, then they should be looking beyond them. And of course, people like me yes. and those others who are part of the exercise in mm -hmm. 2017 and did not get into office, we should be preparing for office in 2022. All right, it's not worthy that, uh, are you vying for any position because I know that you're a former? Yes, in 2017, I was a running mate, a yes. presidential running mate. For? Dr. Jafet Kaluyu. All right. We ran as independent candidates. All right. In preparation for 2022, mm -hmm. we've been working on building a party. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of time before we launch this party that's going to be all inclusive will uphold the tenets of democracy right. and will carry forward
this nation to make it as great as was envisioned by those who fought for independence. And of course, I understand this of vying for the Kibrempi. Well, yeah, I, I, am, I am one of the aspirants for yes. uh, Kibra MP position. Um, but then, of course, we are having a problem with our party. I think you understand the intrigues and jubilee party as we speak. Yes. Uh, and that is subject to uh, today's IBC dispute uh, mm -hmm. uh, outcome. Mm -hmm. Of course, we, uh, we and other candidates subjected ourselves through a vetting process. Yes. Uh, we went through a vetting and everybody knows uh, what happened and we are still waiting. But then, uh, let me say this. Um, you asked a very critical question about 2022 yes. and, and succession time? and mm -hmm. all these politics that are here. One of the things I really like to agree uh, with what my colleague is saying is that, you see, uh, there is a time for everything. There might be a time for uh, delivery of services. And to this extent, the support of the president, uh, the ruling uh, uh, coalition or the ruling party to deliver the big four agenda. And that is what the president has been asking each and every political players regardless of where they are coming from, to support him, you know, to fulfill the Big Four agenda. The other thing that the president has been focusing, that is in the, the fight against corruption. And what now is getting in mm -hmm. is the unity pact. Yes. They unite the country towards a common cause. Mm -hmm. Alex, my that problem has been, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and let me say this, that everybody who ran mm -hmm. uh, in 2017 has not been around for some time and this is when I, I want to ask my brother with mm -hmm. the we, be it independent of the party that he ran through mm -hmm. what we could actually be seeing other political players that ran through that platform to do is to seriously hold the government accountable and be vocal in matters of governance matters of corruption and matters of big four agenda mm -hmm. the problem of launching parties as we head to election this is our undoing as kenyans and i think instead of us mm -hmm. uh putting a sitting at a point where we ask what did you do with what you're given not only at the national level yes. not only at the executive level could we begin to question what has been our political place and all the candidates who ran for presidential or any other position to begin to task even as we head through uh, political issues referendum and all this could we hear the voices of those who are at the equal platform the problem that i question and give uh -huh. critic that as we head to 2022, you are going to see a lot of political parties, mm -hmm. a lot of formation. And I would be very critical and ask them, what have you been doing in the time that you didn't uh, manage to get into position until now? Uh, Secondly, well, uh -huh. okay, just a moment. Let, let's allow him to go finish. Of, just a moment. Let's, uh, let's allow him to finish. Uh, right now, mm -hmm. like he said, the different political camps, mm -hmm. and this is a ruling government. One of the things, this is, uh, this is undoing. Mm -hmm. He's only mentioned Kelevi and, and, and Tanga Tanga. We're also having a women that are... Embrace and Inua. Embrace and all these things. Mm -hmm. The opposition that has forgotten their oversight role mm -hmm. and is now dallying with the government. All right. The Dan citizens are left at the masses mm -hmm. of probably civil society, which I have not seen questioning the government a lot, mm -hmm. and the media. Dan, so, you mentioned yes. two things about accountability and the, the coming up of several teams that have been coming up. I want to give you an, uh, an opportunity to respond to what you said about accountability. Well, first, mm -hmm. allow me to just respond to mm -hmm. some things he said. Yes. You see, this is the problem with the leadership we have today. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people confuse movement with motion. You see, right. you need to be able to move from point A to point B. Don't just appear like you're doing something when you're not actually doing mm -hmm. anything. Well, he's a member of Jubilee Party, I believe. Yes. And for him to point fingers at what others out there are doing is really not been sincere. All right. Because Jubilee is a party that has been plagued with a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows this. In Kibra, for instance, Jubilee nominated someone who has not even been a member of the party. You see, that shows that this party is not serious. I've been in Kenya since I was born. I've gone to school here. I've worked here. I've contributed to society here. Since 2017, we've been on the ground. You've heard about the Red Vest movement. Mm -hmm. Every week you've called me to this show. I have come and provided my insight about how we should move forward on things. Yeah. So 
What I would urge young people to do is to invest their time in the causes that are going to move this nation forward and to not just shout about things. We have mm -hmm. solutions to the problems that we face. And now, mm -hmm. about the accountability bit, mm -hmm. it's possible we can hold our leaders to account. Mm -hmm. The first line of defense for the citizens are the leaders we've elected into parliament. They're supposed to oversight the government. Mm -hmm. When they do not do that, then we are supposed to agitate, to organize, and tell them that if they do not do that, mm -hmm. we will recall them. If you went through the motions, mm -hmm. you know that in August, it was there's that clause where you can recall your MP if mm -hmm. you're not satisfied by the work they are doing. So, yes, uh -huh. we have to keep pushing our leaders. Yes to hold those in office to account. There's something I want to quote from the president that he said about corruption, the corruption Kwagma that has been hitting the country. This was said, I'm also not seeking re-election, and I quote, and don't care who is caught in the mix. He's speaking two things here. He's not seeking re-election. On the other hand, he says, I, I don't care whomever is caught in the mix. Previously, he had said something that was quite skeptical. He said, we shall keep that vow because I personally have no friends other than the people of Kenya. What was this? Who, who was being directed towards this statement? Looking at how Jubilee is, and especially, I'd like you don't pre pre precisely to to answer this question. How is Jubilee right now? Because we have Kieleveke, we have Tanga Tanga that are fighting each and every Sunday. Well, well, uh, well I think as a member of the party, um, I I really do not want to put this under the carpet that the house is no longer holding. You know, the center mm -hmm. cannot hold itself, and things are falling apart. And uh, uh, one of the things that I really, we as young people within the party has mm -hmm. questioned the party leader to do mm -hmm. is to call for a parliamentary group meeting. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. The only solution that uh, sorted this problem, because Alex, this is a ruling party. And to that extent, other political players would be important to see as, as, as a party that is able to cohesion and, and roll out development mm -hmm. plans, minors. Uh -huh. So if this, there is a problem with the party, even we, we do not have to shout at different, uh, you know, different platforms, mm -hmm. but even holding the party leadership accountable from within without shouting. This is what we have done as young people in the party. Mm -hmm. And there are several times we've asked the party to hold itself, avoid these camps. But the other thing that happens uh, that, that really it's putting us at, 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 at a crossroads is the fact that we are having uh, different parties under the formation. These are parties that came with, with different ideologies, you understand? Through the margin. Uh, th through the margin. Right. And the purpose is that the party leader has been vocal that is not seeking another term. The question is, by the invitation and working with the opposition leader, what is the line between owning a manifesto, the Jubilee Manifesto, and embracing Mm -hmm. you know the opposition the difference of yeah. working mm -hmm. with you, you understand mm -hmm. and trying to commit and fulfilling the big four do you think we have an active opposition right now there is no i can tell you for a fact mm -hmm. there is no active opposition because then uh -huh. we are torn in between because look at the first term of mm -hmm. between 2013 to 2017 mm -hmm. when the opposition would actively live alone the battles in the streets and even within the national assembly even within the senate and these are processes like my brother said that is the first process that citizens would actually voice their concern through the represented uh, elected representatives but as we move to after 2017 in the handshake it actually it's, it's actually opposition that was diluted and oh dealing right. with the government. So as a person who is within the party, mm -hmm. it, is not, it is not me to celebrate if the citizens, the voices of the citizens are diluted within the power in trying to work within the umbrella of uniting the country. Right. But then, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. let me go, le just a second. Mm -hmm. Please go. Uh, Mudiora, let me tell you that even uh, the Third Way Alliance was a participant in the election. Mm -hmm. They did not stop after the election. They came and trying to find an alternative. You understand? Yes. They, they, they're trying to find an alternative. What is better for Kenyans? And hence their proposal to Punguza Mzigo. 
It is an active process that so goes are on. Are you proposing that even other parties should now, come Now, I'm not saying other parties, but even other players. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, well, I might not be uh, really uh, a follower of the Red Vest movement, but I would want to see uh, you are, you, you are the presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. What does you, presidential candidate, have a proposition that would help Kenyans? Issues of formation of the parties, and these are issues that I have been very vocal about. As we head to election, and I would not really be uh, happy about formation of more parties. We already have political players yeah. Dan, that I would provide us with an okay. yeah. yeah. Alex, on which, what it, it is. Dan, and, and the I'm last thing Dan, that anyone should do yes. is to take advice about forming parties from someone who's a member of the Jubilee Party. They have showed us how to not run a political party. Right. Yeah, a party formed in 2016, and right after the election, it crumbles. You've heard about the beyond zero corruption. Mm -hmm. These are Kenyans who have come together to fight the vice that's corruption. This ill that makes sure that Kenya cannot rise. Now, we've tried to engage stakeholders through dialogues, and it's open to everyone. It's not by your affiliation to a political party mm -hmm. or to any other movement. If you're tired with corruption and you want action taken, mm -hmm. The banner has been the beyond zero corruption. Mm -hmm. And this is a house or an umbrella body for all Kenyans. I've been a key player in that. We've held protests in the streets. We've been tear gassed a number of times, mm -hmm. but we have not relented. And our call from the very beginning was that should any state officer mm -hmm. be implicated in corruption, they should first and foremost step aside we agitated for that and eventually it came to be. We saw the CS for Finance step aside. Mm -hmm. We've seen a number of government officials being barred from accessing office after they've been implicated in corruption cases. So you can see that the activities we've carried out have yielded some fruits. All right. Now, the formation mm -hmm. of these new parties yes. is a leeway to enhance and deepen democracy. When Jubilee was formed, it swallowed up a lot of political parties, thus, in a way, shrinking the democratic space that we have. That's why we can see the rise of tyranny. Now, we want to embrace democracy. We want to give voice to all Kenyans who perhaps may have a different opinion as compared to those in, in have power. Have Kenyans been deprived their right? Have they been depra deprived of their right of democracy? I believe. To a certain extent, yes. And there is something I wanted to underline mm -hmm. from the statement my friend here made. He's a young leader, and he boldly came out, unlike those other psychophants we see, and said that the center is not holding mm -hmm. in Jubilee. Work needs to be done mm -hmm. to fix this. That's what we need. We need people coming out and saying, we love our party. We know it can deliver, but there's a problem on this and that. Can uh, we right. please Gentlemen, give a way forward? Let's talk about the 2018, Ma the March 2018 handshake between President Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, uh, the former Premier. Has it broken some chords in the Jubilee Party? It did. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll let yeah. him take that. It's okay. You can just go ahead <laughs> yes. as we are as we allow it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, you've had people say, "I think we are not on the right path," but because of the handshake, mm -hmm. I will not push to add. I, right. I will let what the principles say is the case mm -hmm. remain as such. Has it impacted on the deputy president, the handshake? I do not see how, right. because his office uh -huh. is protected by the constitution. Mm -hmm. Every day when he wakes up, we see him go around the country launching projects. So clearly, I do not see how the handshake has undermined him in any way. All right, done. Well, well uh, as... as, as uh, as a, somebody who is within, uh, I think uh, I would like to tell you that was the, the point of conflict. Um, l let's also understand uh, where we are coming from as a country, mm -hmm. especially after the rerun of 2000, uh, 2017, mm -hmm. uh, uh, repeat election. Yes. Everybody understand uh, what happened and the turmoil and, you know, uh, our economy uh, stagnating because of in fear of investment, stocks market, you know, coming down. And I acknowledge that it is important for two leaders, these two most protagonists, to meet and agree. Um, 
and uh, not really make these two things about themselves. Let me begin by saying, it was for the good and for the interest of all Kenyans to have a peaceful country where we would proceed to do our work as usual. Right. Now, uh, coming in, and Alex have been in this platform mm -hmm. every time. Today, I do not want to repeat mm -hmm. the incoming of PBI and the rest of all these initiatives. Mm -hmm. You know, they are meant for public good, mm -hmm. but the public have not yet received what is in store. What is the details about this? Yeah, but BBI is supposed to present its Which is final okay. report by the end of this month. Listen, so they're still listen, in their even, even due Pugusa time. Mizigo had their proposal, but it was within the public domain. Mm -hmm. You know, it is incumbent for each and every initiative that I run. As a young person, I would want through open data and open policy. But they'll be presenting that. Listen, uh, you, you, you know, what is in the public domain is the nine point agenda. Mm -hmm. that, that, that everybody yes. knows and can read about them. Yes. But I am going to tell you that there are issues that, uh, you know, these two leaders might have agreed on. I am not speaking about this. The Even the National Assembly members right. are asking mm -hmm. for these things to be made public. Yes. And as a young person, and the interest of this country, bef I know there is a report coming, but mm -hmm. I would want these nitty gritties as as, as, as person. The we the are march. holding this country mm -hmm. in trust right. for the future generation. I would want to know exactly what is in store for the future. Uh, uh, and secondly, uh, yes. uh, you are asking what is in... Uh, what, 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 what about the deputy president? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, after the handshake, you've seen there's a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. The demeanor, the you know, uh, between the ties mm -hmm. and, and, you know, my brother and my sister and, and, all, these things, mm -hmm. and all these things working together mm -hmm. automatically has not been, has disappeared. So the tie issue has now faded. And, and now, hence the formation now of Kileweke and Tangatanga. It was on the basis of this thing called the handshake. All right. In the BBA. Troubles did not begin after the, the, the arena of election. Mm -hmm. It actually began after the handshake. So it is important for mm -hmm. political players, including my brother, mm -hmm. Could young people critically move to occupy this space for a long time that, regardless of any political uh, you know, landscape we are coming from, could we as young people own this space and begin to question that our political parties have not been forthcoming with the mm -hmm. indulgement and engagement of the youth, mostly in important issues and policy, yes. regardless of any political formulation we are coming from, could it be important for us to move in swift? and begin to question critically these important documents. That's quite a yeah. point that we'll, of course, be looking at about because the Because what we are lacking government. in this country mm -hmm. is the critic, you know, we do not have a critical force of young people who are drawn from different political uh, mm -hmm. issues, agreeing on specific issue based. All right, so young yeah. people are really to blame on this? I, I, I think they're really, really to blame, but even ask, asking them to, fro you know, fr you really need to front yourself. All right. You know, you really need to front yourself in this initiative. This is not what we've been doing as young people. All right. So young people need to be vocal? This is what I'm saying. All right. And I'm glad we have one who's very vocal right here. All so right. And I, know, I know we still have very many watching yeah. us this morning. And we should encourage them. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I saw in Nanyuki some youth doing the unforgivable. Someone paid them to show up with placards to heckle a leader. Well, I would urge our young people people mm -hmm. to critically think about the actions that they take. Right. We have brains. So let's use these brains. About Tangatanga and Kieleweke, let's go back to the genesis. If you look at the statistics, you'll see that the attrition rate for politicians yes. from the Mount Kenya region is in the range of over 80%. 80% mm -hmm. of the people in parliament today are not coming back. So we should see beyond the deceit. Mm -hmm. The leaders currently playing around, monkeying around and trying to curtail the president. It's because they know they most probably are not coming back. Mm -hmm. So what they're trying to do is to milk as much as they can mm -hmm. from the cash cows that are ready to give at the moment. And we right. know or we've heard that the deputy president has some very deep pockets so right. let us see beyond the lie. Mm -hmm. Let us demand for value. That's what I'll keep saying. You elected the yeah. leader. Are they doing the job you, elect, you elected them to do? That if they are not, yes. seek out an alternative that is credible. And there are lots of them. 
where are we heading in terms of our politics as a country? Because looking at uh, last Sunday, but one, we had Didi Nyoro and of course, um, uh, minor commander, the, the nominated member of parliament, throwing words towards each, each other in a church. Same incident happened yesterday in Laikipia County, where we had minor commander, you know, being, of course, obviously, it was an ejection process by the, by the Laikipia County uh, woman representative. Where are we heading in terms of politics in 2022? Well, our, the Vision 2030 envisions what the political, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, or the political side of Vision 2030 states out clearly that we are looking towards an issue-based politics. Mm -hmm. And politics that we are not really swayed aside by ethnic bigotry mm -hmm. or all, uh, you know, um, uh, name-calling, shouting all over. What did this mean for us as youth? It, it really places us at a position where we are inheriting mm -hmm. a political culture where we can be able to stand in any platform regardless of party affiliation, mm. regardless of class, to subject ourselves to citizens and sell the manifesto. And citizens would actually put as a menu and decide based on the policy. This is what we envision. Yes. You know? Right. But what we are seeing, we are being treated to, you know, this kind of old guard political, you know, uh, maneuvers, mm -hmm. where our politics has even become so detrimental that even in the centers of worship, mm -hmm. People would definitely throw words, you know, uh, uh, towards each other. Mm -hmm. People would definitely eject each other from a church function. Mm -hmm. It all narrows down to values and, and principles. As a country, when we allowed our politicians to water down the operations and effect of uh, chapter 6 of the Constitution, then we ushered ourselves into leaders who do not have regard to values and principles. One of the issues that we... And, and I'm very passionate about this. Mm -hmm. In future, Kenyans and electorates, mm -hmm. my brother said, beyond the point of dispute, could we look at ourselves? Who, who are we? Mm -hmm. Because who we are electing into positions yes. are exactly a reflection of who we are as a society of voters. Let, let, let me ask a simple question. Yeah? Are we in Kenya having bad politics? Muthiora? Kenya has had very bad politics. Mm -hmm for a very long time. Yes. Our political culture, I think, is one of the worst. Because to begin with, mm -hmm. it's ethnic based. Yes. When it's not ethnic based, mm -hmm. then it takes social classes. You've had the narrative about hustlers versus dynasties yes. and that sort of a thing. Yes. What we need to focus on are issues. And we have lots of them. But then to put it all together, we know that our biggest problem mm -hmm. is poverty. Mm -hmm. We should be asking ourselves, mm -hmm. what is my leader doing to help alleviate our society from poverty? All right, gentlemen. You know we have the highest taxes yes. in the world. Uh -huh. You know we have the highest rates of corruption. You know, as a nation, we are not healthy. Our health system has failed. Right. Our education system is just beginning to get fixed. Right. Are our leaders delivering on these things? All right, gentlemen, because of time, you'll allow us to break for that time, because time is really not on our side. But as a parting shot, I want, you to, I want to ask this question. Will the 2022 politics be characterized by dynasty politics, as we have seen in the past? I should begin, Dan? Well, it's, it's, already, it's already taking shape, mm -hmm. and uh, that is the narrative that it's being driven. Uh, but then that the only caution is the voters actually to disabuse that narrative yes. and, and make mm. these politicians know that All they right. are going to elect people based on policy and what they say. All right. Yeah. Precisely. Straight to the point. Let's remember that our problem mm -hmm. is not the neighbor who is not from my tribe. Mm -hmm. The problem is your inability to provide for your children. All right. That meal, the education, the health that mm -hmm. they need. Mm -hmm. Let us look to fix these things. All right. Many thanks, gentlemen, for making it to come, of course, and discuss matters relating to succession politics 2022. My name, has, my name is Karanja Alex, and has been Youth and Politics. Val is coming up next. Don't touch the dial. This is Y254. Many thanks for coming along. Thank I you. know time has really, really been bad. <laughs>